All right, hello, welcome, welcome. Um, in this lesson, this will be lesson number three on factoring. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, lesson number one, we talked about um, what it meant to be factoring, uh, what does it mean to find a factor, um, what is the GCF, um, and lesson number two, we talked about factoring that, G uh, that greatest common factor out of a polynomial. Uh, the game plan for lesson number three is if we have some sort of uh, polynomial in the expression of uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1, how can we factor this into uh, two binomials? Okay, So that seems like a lot of mumbo jumbo at first, but let me try and break that down for us. When we talk about polynomials, um, this might have seemed like a long time ago, but um, polynomials have certain degrees. right? So like, let's say if we have this polynomial, just the, po the constant polynomial of two. Um, if you're thinking, you know, Mr. How is two a polynomial? It is. If you go back to definition, if you go back to the videos on polynomial, a polynomial is just, um, it could be a, a constant, right? It could be a constant. Um, it could be a variable with exponents and, um, yeah, there were and there were some certain conditions that couldn't hold for it to be a polynomial. But if you're a constant, if you're a variable, if you're an ex, if you're if you're if your constant or variable has an exponent, you're a polynomial, right? So it may sound a little weird to you at first, but two is a polynomial. And if we think about it, what is the degree of this polynomial? This will be every constant polynomial, like two. Remember, constant, nothing, this 2 will never change, right? You know, there's no variable changing it. So 2 is constant. Every constant degree polynomial has degree 0, okay? Let's say if we put in 2x, what would be the degree of this polynomial? This will be degree 1, okay? There is a 1. We're looking at the exponent over here. We're looking at that exponent. There is... Um, Hopefully this doesn't freak you out, but there is an x to the zero over here. Oh God, can you see that? Or is it too bright? Yeah, let me get rid of that green. Okay, let me change the color. Um, maybe this red. There is an x to the zero over here. Okay, um, because x to the zero is just equal to one. All right. Um, all right. So I probably done a good job of confusing you right now, but <laughs> let's try and continue on and actually get to the good stuff. So. You have 2, that's a polynomial, and its degree is 0. You have 2x, and you look at the exponent, there's a 1 over here, and that degree is 1. Let's look at a 2x squared. What is the degree of this? This is, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. This is degree 2, right? Because you're looking at that exponent over there. Let's say you have 2x cubed. Our degree is 3, and we can just keep going on, right? But if you have a polynomial, let's kind of focus on this. If you have a polynomial of 2x squared, sometimes you could have some other mumbo jumbo. Maybe you could have some some 3x plus 5, right? You know, this is still a degree 2 polynomial because 2 is the highest degree. And we call this, oh, I should have probably had a, a list of names. But uh, if we go over here, if you're degree 0, you are called constant. If you are degree one, you are linear, okay? Think about it, you're linear. If you graph this two x, it's just gonna be a line. If you graph this two on a, on a calculator, you're just gonna be a horizontal line, just like this, you're not gonna change, all right? Um, if you're degree two, the name for you is quadratic. And that's what we're gonna focus on right now is our quadratic polynomials. And if you are degree three, you're cubic. And then if you're degree four, you're quartic. Then quintic. And it just kind of keeps going on with all these uh, Greek roots, okay? But for today, we're just gonna focus on quadratic. So when we said that this polynomial, it has degree two, it is some two x squared plus three x plus five, that's what it meant over here, going back to this. Some, um, whatever, this, here, let's uh, show both of them. If you have some ax squared plus bx plus c, you know, the a, the b, the c, they can be any real numbers, 
and you notice that this degree over here is two. This, because it's degree two, we call it quadra. Uh, we call it quadratic. And the game plan is that if we have this ax squared plus bx, like if we have this two x squared plus three x plus five, we want to factor this into two binomials. That when I multiply them, I'll get my original um, polynomial over here. Okay. And the game plan is, we're going to uh, begin with the easier stuff here, our, when a is equal to 1, okay? When a is equal to 1. Here, this example I gave here, a is equal to 2. We're going to focus on that on the next lesson. But let's look at some polynomials over here. Uh, you probably recall back in Algebra 1, um, if, and if you don't, it's okay. It's If we have this polynomial over here, this quadratic, uh, quadratic expression, okay? This b squared plus 8b plus 7. How do you think we can factor this into two binomials that when I multiply them, I'll get the original b squared plus 8b plus 7, okay? That's what we want to do. Um, if you don't remember the rhythm, all right, you hear the lesson plan, the game plan is, what are the rhythms and techniques for, let me zoom out, oh, let's zoom in. Uh, what are the rhythms and techniques for factoring trinomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1? Okay, We're going to learn the techniques for it. What I'd like you to do is um, have this in your notes. This will be very good. Okay, In algebra, factors are what we can multiply together to get an expression. So um, you see this, this uh, quadratic expression over here, this polynomial of degree 2, it could be broken down into these two degree one polynomials and when you multiply them you will get x squared plus 4x plus 3 because if we were to multiply this real quick um, x times x is x squared x times 1 is positive x 3 times x is plus 3x and 3 times 1 is 3 and then x squared you can't do anything with it x and 3x you combine into 4x and you have plus 3 and voila these two are the same okay better these two are the same that's what we want to do for all of these, if we're allowed to, okay? And I'll talk about what that means if we're allowed to or not. But in this case, these are all factorable into two binomials. So um, what is the rhythm? Like, how do you know if you have this, for example, how do you know these are the two binomials that give you this when you multiply them? That's what we want to do. We want to take this trinomial and factor into two binomials. We're going to do that for all of these problems over here. Okay, okay. So um, the rhythm is what I'd like you to do is write this down. Um, what two numbers, when you multiply them, all right? So what two numbers, when you multiply them, give you C, but when you add them, give you B. All right. And when we're talking about the C and the B here, we're talking about the quadratic expression. C is this guy over here. And B is the coefficient of that x, that middle term. Okay? What's you know, this is usually um, the first term, middle term, and the last term. Or you can say left, middle, right. Okie dokie. So have this down and this will be like a, a new mantra for you. All right. What two numbers when you multiply them give you C? But when you add them, give you b. And I'll show an example right here. So let's look at this one. Let's look at this example. Let me get rid of all these papers, get it out of the way. Let's look at this. Um, let me zoom in. All right. So if we look at our mantra, our mantra says, what two numbers, when we multiply them, give us 7? OK? Let's see. What are the numbers that give us positive 7? We have, to get positive 7, we can multiply 1 and 7. And we could also do negative 1 and negative 7. Because 1 times 7 is positive 7. And negative 1 times negative 7 is also positive 7. So don't forget about the negatives, OK? And here, we'll put a section of sum, OK? Because what it's saying is, what two numbers, when you multiply them, give you C? Oh, whoops. I got to zoom in. That was tight. Oh, no. That's zoom in. Okay. So 
what two numbers when you multiply them give you C, but when you add them give you B. Here, we're finding the two numbers that we multiply them give us seven, but when we add them, they gotta give us, well, what's our B? It's eight, it's positive eight. So let's see, one plus seven gives us eight, and negative one times negative seven is negative eight. So this is the guy right here. It's gonna be this one. It's gonna be these two numbers that work. Because when I multiply 1 and 7, I get 7. And when I add them, I get 8. And the way this breaks up into is we use that 1 and 7. Yeah, we're going to use that 1 and 7. You're just going to put an x here and an x here. Oh, no, we're not. x is not our variable. It's b. All right, so we're going to use a b here and a b here. And we're going to use positive 1 and positive 7. Okay. Yeah, this is one and seven. So this is positive one and positive seven. And that's it. And if you multiply these two using the FOIL method, you will get the original, all right? Try and do this one. This one, um, actually no, let's do the second one. Let's do number two. If you want, try and do all these questions by yourself, pause the video, or if you want, we'll try and, I'll do something with you right now. All right, so if you have n squared minus 11n plus 10. So what's the rhythm? What do we ask ourselves first? What are the numbers? What do numbers, when you multiply them, give you positive 7? I mean, sorry, not positive 7, positive 10. So if I have 10 over here, we're going to try and find what are the factors of 10 that give you positive 10. So let's see. Um, you have 1 and 10. You have negative 1, negative 10, right? You have 2 and 5, and negative 2, negative 5. So these are all the numbers. These are all the possible combinations that give you positive 10. But what are we looking for? Not only does it have to, not only do the two numbers have to multiply to give you positive 10, when you add them, they have to give you negative 11. So here, we're going to use sum. Sum. So what is the sum of this? 1 plus 10 is 11. So that doesn't work because we don't want 11. We want negative 11. Let's see. Negative 1 plus negative 10, that gives us negative 11. So this one looks good. Let's just check the others. 2 plus 5 is 7. That doesn't work. Negative 2 plus negative 5, that's negative 7. So this is the guy. This one works. It's this combination here. And we can break this into... Wrong way. Um, this is equal to negative, I'm sorry, n minus 1. You just basically use that variable n. So it's n, one of these factors, n minus 1 times n minus 10. And that's it. We broke it into, we broke this trinomial into, into uh, two binomials, and we get the original when we multiply them, right? Let's try and do one more together. Let's look at this one. m squared plus m minus 90. So the goal is sometimes it's very obvious. Like here, the second you see 7, I already know it's 1 and 7. And that gives me 8. Here, I see 10. Um, it's not too bad. Here, you have negative 12. There, you know, you could mentally, sometimes you could do these very fast. But sometimes they get a little tricky, like negative 90. Well, let's look at this one. If we have, um, actually, let me do that over here. Let me write it, uh, m squared my plus m minus 90 is equal to some binomial, right? m and m, right? That's all I know. That's how you can set it up always. It's going to be an m and an m because we only have m squared. Notice that in this lesson, the a, the coefficient of that m squared is 1 for all these problems that we're doing. If you notice, look here. Uh, let me, uh, yep. You see? The coefficient is 1. Coefficient is 1 for all of them. Okay? This rhythm of what two numbers when you multiply them... Uh, give you C, but when you add them, give you B, that only works when you have coefficient 1. 
it changes when you have coefficient 2, for example. And we're going to talk about it in the, in the next video. But let's do this one. If I have negative 90, right? Um, oh, God. All right. If I have negative 90, what do you need to do? First, find the factors of 90. Okay, so this is negative 90. I'm sorry. What two numbers, when you multiply them, give you negative 90? But the sum, what will our sum have to be? It'll have to be, po what is the b here? It's a positive 1. So we want positive 1 somehow. That's what we want. Well, let's see. Pause the video if you want and try and find the factors um, of negative 90. Let's see. What gives you negative 90? You have um, uh, negative 3 times 30 gives you, whoops, oh my god. I am awful right now with the, so, uh, zooming in and zooming out. Okay. Uh, so negative 3 and 30 gives us negative 90. If that gives us 90, also negative 30 and 3 give us 90. What else? Um, you have 15 and negative 6 and negative 15 and 6. Okay. Um, what else? Negative 10 and 9 and also negative 9 and 10. Are there other combinations? 4, 5, 5, uh, oh yeah, f um, <coughs> 5 and 18. So negative 5 and 18 and negative 18 and 5. These all, these all give us negative 90. These all give us negative 90. But we want to find which one, when we add them, give us positive 1. And then it will work. So let's see. Uh, negative 3 plus 30 is uh, 27. This is negative 27. This will be um, 9. This will be negative 9. This will be negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. This one gives us positive 1. Cha-ching! That will be the one. Okay? We're going to use this combination. But let's just check the others just in case. All right? This is negative 5 plus 18 is 13. And negative 18 plus 5 is negative 13. Okay? So this one will work. So now we can use that, and it will be m minus 9 m minus 9 and m plus 10 okay uh, let's just double check what is m times m that's m squared what is m times 10 it's plus 10 m what's negative 9 plus I'm sorry negative 9 times m that is negative 9 m and negative 9 times 10 is negative 90 and then we combine it all together we get m squared plus m minus 90 and this is equal to this. So big happy face. Okay. Um, let's see. Questions to consider. Does order matter over here? Like instead of having m minus 9 and m plus 10, will it matter if I have m plus 10 and m minus 9? Will it change anything if we, if we, uh, if we flip them? If you're confused, well not confused, well if you want to look for yourself, Multiply this. Multiply these two. Use the FOIL. If you get this, then you're good. And if you don't get this, then... Well, you should get this because it won't matter. But yeah, okay? It won't matter. You're allowed to switch the two binomials. Um, so use this technique and try and solve the other ones. Right? Try and uh, pause the video. Try and do these two questions. Pause the video, try and do these three questions. And um, here what I'll do is I'll write uh, some more difficult questions. Not Well, you know, they'll just make you think a little more. So let's see. If I had, for example, let's factor x squared. Let's see, minus 27x um, minus 72. Okay. What would... What is that in two binomials? What would that be? Okay. Um, let's try another one. Let's try. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Okay. Uh, x squared minus 20x. Um, 
plus 64. And what does that equal? Okay. Oh, this should be a positive here. No, no. Wait, crap. I'm messing up. Sorry. This should be uh, x squared minus 27x plus 72. Okay. What will that be? So we'll try and factor this into two trinomials. I'm sorry, two binomials and this into two binomials. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah. So just small things. You know what? I'll make it in the next video. Like small things to consider. But um, okay. I hope this helped. All right, I'll see you.